like he established from the beginning. Only for Israel, the 12 tribe, Jacob's children, scattered into every kingdom. Let the Bible reveal it. Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it tells us how people went into slavery. You can open your Bible too and clearly see that blacks, Hispanics, and natives are the chosen seed. We've been through hell, hot water, and back. Many years we have been off track. That don't change the facts that the real tribe of Judah is black. And the Israelites ain't taking jack. Just step back. Hey, we ain't playing games, our lives at stake. You can leave it if you be in fake. This ain't for play. Hey, we ain't playing games, our lives at stake. You can leave it if you be in fake. This ain't for play. It ain't what you know, it's about who can live it. Righteous decisions. Every holy word, unique, every verse brilliant. Fashion by the wicked, groom by the righteous. Trying to make a change, make us worse than ISIS. And I ain't about the games, got me walking with the giants. I ain't talking Zodiac, but I'm the son of a lion. Chess moves, I can see the dragon getting raw. Chosen seed, you can tell we cut from that cloth. Rockin' land and fabric, yeah. high holy sapphire, right. UIC class on my iPad. I don't really no strap, I ain't got a clutch. Me and Jesus Christ tight like a cobra clutch. Wonder why they even rage, cause they time is up. Precepts, we can line them up. I wonder why they even rage. A drop of a bucket, rather be spit. You press it now, you I see food. You out your weight class. It's been 24 hours and we hungry. Time for break fast. Act 17, verse 30. We don't hear you. Acts 13, 26. You in our rear view. Same book, chapter 2, 8. Now you looking with the poop face. Cause we bad like I was bootlace. We would step on your minute race. Here's a doggy tree. Humans talking. Go somewhere and play. Always want attention. Licking on our fringes. We trying to teach repentance to our we equal to Satan, chosen over die at 18. We got you, eat them, no, we leaving. Now that the time's getting closer, we cry to the lies of the vines that's been broken. We strive till we die of that sky crack open. We remain focused on God's chosen. I wonder why the heathens pray. Ever since I left the world to please the Lord, I put my life up on the line to please the Lord. No, I don't do no fake people all on my timeline. So tell these haters fake, take me from the sideline. You gotta do the work. You gotta put it work. Got the kingdom in my mind when I work. No, I don't need no fake people all on my timeline. Yeah. So tell these haters fake, take me from hey. the sideline. You gotta put it work. 
or you could end up on a shirt. Disobeying his commandments, it could land you in the dirt. That's for certain. Ain't no need to sugarcoat the truth hurt. Out here risking my life so that you don't end up in a hearse. I can see the haters hating from the sideline. They just mad because I'm living by his guideline. Constantly meditating, I know it can't get frustrating to see all your people sleeping when they should all be awakened. But don't you worry, because the Lord makes that decision. Keep the kingdom in my sights and I won't let them blur my vision. Keep the mark on all the brothers and sisters causing division. Cause Shalom, shalom. Most High Christ bless. I'm Captain Yadon to my right. Rama, most I Christ bless. Uh, Captain Naon, Shalom, Israel. Karatiza. Shalom, Shalom, family. Most High Christ bless. Officer Karatiza. Hey, Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Officer Michael. Most High Christ bless. Officer Zach. So, with no further ado, let's send out the prayers. Sisters, please make sure your heads are covered. Men, heads uncovered. Everybody face to each, please. Men of Israel, no. Trumpets! <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather together once again, Lord. Another beautiful day, one step closer to your kingdom. As you continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, and instructions down upon us and on the congregation, lead us and guide us down a righteous, straight path, Lord. As you continue to deliver us into your kingdom, bless those that are sick, those that are shed in. Bless the congregation, bless the family, bless the hands that prepared the food and the drink, Lord. And as you continue to watch over us, lead us and guide us in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, shalom, shalom, Israel. Um, today's class we're doing is called Seven Signs You Strong in the Lord, all right? Seven signs you strong in the Lord. Because a lot of times, remember at the class, we always talk about be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. All right. So we want self-examination constantly. All right. Um, uh, let's start off with that scripture. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians. You know what I want. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. All right. Self-examination. All right. Um, a special shout out, you know, to the men of the most high. Uh, I know today in Houston, the sisters are doing a men's appreciation day. And, you know, hey, all praise to the most high. We definitely all praise, uh, all praise uh, to the most high. The sisters, sisters got the school looking nice today. Uh, you know, the, the brothers, some of the brothers up in here, they smiling. You know what I'm saying? Soldier Silas, he, he shout out. <laughs> he cheesing. <laughs> Okay, we'll show it. We'll show it at the end. We'll show it at the end. Yeah. But you know, a, lo a lot of brothers is excited. You know, because it's work to do. It's continued work to do, and preparation of our minds to be able to be strong, profitable servants of the Lord. Hey, Cap, that's funny because the brother Baruch came, and he was like, "I thought boots on the ground. I thought we were going to fly a mission or something." <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> right. like, nah, bro, it's appreciation for the men. Right, right, right. All praises. All praises. So go ahead, read that for me. This is Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse five. Examine yourselves; rather ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. You see that? That's that's one of Captain Hoshai's favorite scriptures when he say, "Examine yourself, prove your own self, whether you be in the faith." Because I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of brothers and sisters come in this truth, and they fail to realize how important it is self-examination is because what ends up happening, whether it's a fence or in a trial, what ends up happening, Israel starts to lose the fight. They forget why they came in here. Sometimes even friendship, they forget why they came in here, all right? And we can't let nothing get in the way of us receiving our crown, receiving eternal life, seeing vengeance upon the heathen, all right? Because... You know, we I was out in camp uh, in San Antonio. I know some of the men was in corporate, some of the men was in Houston last Sabbath. And, um, you know, we we pushing recompense and a redemption of a people that's lost, all right? Um, when the Holocaust happened, they, they said they wanted, uh, um, what they call it, 
reparations and recognition and right, right. the uh the Adolf Hitler's right hand men and his generals brought to justice. But for some reason our people think because this kingdom is still uh up and running that justice is not gonna come. All right. So um with no further ado, uh let's go into the topic. Um top um sign one, seven signs out of the seven signs. Knowing how to identify a trial or a judgment, a trial and judgment. So what does that mean? As you go through this walk, certain situations are going to arise where you're going to go through a trial or uh, something's going to happen to you while you're in this walk. And when it happens, you got to ask yourself, was it a trial for me to learn from and build from? Or was it a judgment for something that I've been doing or done? All right. Because the Most High deals with judgment, all right? This ain't Christianity, all right? Um, let's go to um, um, Romans chapter 5. You know what I want. It's dealing with the increase, and it's dealing with time and progression in this truth. Read what you got. This is the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Come on. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation You see also. that? He said he, we glory in tribulation, meaning what? Whether it's a judgment or a trial, you're supposed to take it cheerfully. Right. All right? Come on. Knowing that tribulations work it patient. You see that? Because a lot of times we go through a trial and we love to see it over quickly. All right? Even when you go going, let's just say a brother or sister is looking for a job. When you're looking for a job and those bills are counting up, you, you, you wish you had a, a paycheck the next day. Right, right now. But you ain't even got a job. You understand? So... But we want that trial to be over. But the Lord said, look, I got you. All right. Read it again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulations work in patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope, make it not a shame. Because the love of God shed it abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You see that? So these are key things that you got to understand going through a trial. That you're going to gain patience from going through the trial, not seeing it uh, executed immediately, but also to experience because another brother or sister will come behind you and they'll be able to you could be able to speak to them and say, look, I, I went through that. So this is how I went through it. This is the scripture that I applied. All right. Because the scriptures say the wisdom of this world is foolish. Right. You know how you going to uh, uh, that's like a uh, you got a, a brother that just repented and he got a soldier that's over him, that's building him up. Then he got his worldly best friend. And all of a sudden he gets a phone call or a, a booty call at 3 o'clock in the morning. And 3 o'clock in the morning he calling his soldier and said, what should I do? The soldier like, bro, change your number. Block her phone number. Right. But then the brother that's in the world going to say, what you asking me for? Go by Walgreens and go get some jimmies. Go hit it. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Because what? That's no wisdom to say that. That's death behind that. But understanding and say, look, Brother, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Right. Get rid right. of that phone number. You got all these women that got your old phone number. Get rid of that number. Right. That's profitable, all right? Hey, Cap, and then on that as well, it said that the patience, the experience. The experience is what's going to help you be able to help someone else because you've been through it, all right? You've been tried. You've been tested. So now you can help them overcome that trial. You know, that's what we're all here for in this body is to help one another. Right, 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 right. Being that help to one another. Right. Um, all right. So um, now let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 5. I mean 50. Genesis 50 and 20. Because our forefather went through a trial, and that trial was bondage. All right. And let's see why he went through that bondage. Was it for uh, a judgment, something wicked he did, or did the Lord mean something behind it? And just so y'all know, um, uh, one of the major telltale signs is time. That's why when we read in Romans 5, it talked about being patient, all right? Because time will tell you if you're unsure if that trial was a trial to increase you or a judgment, all right? Because after the trial, something very good will happen, all right? If, if not, it was a judgment after the trial, you will sit there and you'll learn your lesson, all right? So, uh, yeah, Lord's will, right? All right, come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 50 and verse 20. But as for you, 
ye thought evil against me. So Joseph was speaking to his brothers because they put him in captivity. But what ended up happening? He was able to be in a position to help his people. All right. You think, imagine how much patience Joseph had to use. He finally realized at that moment why the Lord put him in that predicament. Yeah. All right. Come on. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You see that? But God meant it unto good. And a lot of times you could go through something and it look horrible at the moment. For example, you could get a flat on 59 just so you wouldn't have flipped over in the 18-wheeler hit you on 16. You know what I'm saying? you like, oh, my God, I got a flat. You mad. You upset. You five minutes late to work. But meanwhile, you wasn't going to make it to work at all. The Most High sent that angel, look, stop him from getting to that point because I want to save my servant. All right? All right? But we don't see the bigger picture because we so stuck on everything being perfect in our life. All right? Come on. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive you see that to save much people alive so a lot of times for example you can have a brother or a sister that is going through a job trial and then that brother or sister always had an aspiration of doing something for themselves then what end up happening they end up losing that job uh, going on unemployment and starting their own business right. now they're able to keep the high holy days right. feast days and expand their business and help this nation all right so you never know what the lord has in store for you uh, Israel got to remember, it's, it's bigger than you. It's big, bigger than each individual. It's about a nation, you know? Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Uh, real quick, it's going back to the basic principles of when we came into the truth. Remember the Most High said, whatever is put on you, take patiently, like it says in the book of Sirach, and be patient like you're bringing out when you are brought to a lower state. Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. And that's important. That's important. So the scriptures letting you know in Sirach too that you're gonna get an increase behind your tr after your trial. All right. So um, let's go to Hebrews chapter ten verse thirty one, because Israel, you gotta understand something. Um, y'all ever remember that movie? Um, what's the name of that movie? Um, um, uh, that movie where the 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 that black man was following everybody around, killing them. Ba um. No, no, no. That Candyman dude. That was him. What's the name of that movie? Uh, huh? Final Destination. You're right. Final Destination. That was some good movies. If you notice, it was a black man bringing the judgment. All right. It, that's God right there. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they couldn't put a, a, a Edomite sitting there and give it the judgment. <laughs> it wouldn't have looked as terrible. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They had to put somebody fear. Right. You know, that people fear. Right. So read that real quick. This is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 31. Uh, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You see what the Bible says? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right. What does that mean? For example, Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down was us falling to the hands of the living God. All right. When you read Daniel's nine, it talked about no, no, nothing so grievous in uh, what's the words I'm looking for? Nothing so hurtful and painful happened in any history of a people. All right. If that would have happened to Esau, they wouldn't have survived. Um, you know, uh, the chattel slavery, the bond, the uh, slave ship, right, whole bondage, right? right, right they right. were built for that. Right, right, right. Right, right. So so just imagine when they go into captivity, they're going to barely make it. It's going to be like three or four of them left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because the, the scriptures say one should be stronger than the other, and that's us. All right? So you got to imagine some of the weakest of our people died on, ca in, on chattel slavery on the way here, and some of the strongest of us lived, all right, to be able to be here, to be able to strive and make offspring to be them, uh, be who we are today. So it's going right back to um, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God because you got to you got to ask yourself. Would you want to willfully sin and just be like, ah, I wait for the judgment? No, I'd rather fall short and get corrected by leadership than no correction. Nobody judge me. And then the most I said, well, when I say judge me, I mean, nobody dealt with the matter to correct you. And then because nobody's judging anybody. We just reading the scriptures to people. All right. 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 
and uh, might quarantine you out of the body just for the sake of the body oh, right. because of that sin, all right, might rise up in the body. So going back to the point, I would rather be corrected and feel felt admonished rather than no correction. And then the angel's like, look, he didn't get a judgment yet, Lord. Can we can we jack him up real quick? And the Lord like, go ahead, jack him up. Just don't kill him. You understand? I'm telling you straight. I've seen a lot of judgment come out. I remember oh, it was a brother that was rebellious against, uh, he brought a doctrine into the body. And we told him, stop, stop. We ain't dealing with this doctrine. He, st he tried to sit down with me and break down the doctrine. I said, brother, get out my house. I kicked him out my house. I think that's the first brother I kicked out my house. I said, get out. <laughs> so anyways, long story short, the brother was put out the body because of that doctrine. And the brother was, uh, what, like a year later or something like that? Yeah, it was about a year later. About a year later, the brother was hit by a car. The car was going 80 miles an hour, and the car hit his body. All right? He I'm wasn't in no car. Right. Yeah, he, he was his, walking. His, he was hit by a vehicle, and the vehicle was going 80 miles an hour. And we warned him, me and right. Captain Aroma, not to do that, brother. Right. That's not wise. Right. But he didn't follow counsel. Right. So, so, and it's showing you that what? It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. So now. Let's go to the second seventh sign, all right? Um, can you correct your brother, all right? Can you correct your brother? Because guess what? We come in this truth, and we're going to jail with certain people, all right? Certain brothers going to cleave to certain brothers. Sisters going to cleave to certain sisters. But can you correct one another? Meaning when the friendship is there and strong, you got to make sure that correction is just as strong, if not stronger. Because remember, we walked in these doors and they ain't know each other. All right? So let's go to Leviticus 19 and 7. All right? And, and, and you know, in the world, we never corrected anything wrong with any of our friends because we wanted that friendship to continue. But now we have to hold a friendship conditional, right. meaning scriptural. Right. All right? A conditional scriptural friendship, all right? It's complicated, all right? <laughs> brother, th this friendship is complicated, brother. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, come on. Now, what you just said was heavy. You said back in the world, we wouldn't, we right, had right. your whole perspective on how you live. Right, right, right. So, 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 hold on, officer. So, you're telling me that if a brother or a sister comes to you with a Matthew 18 situation and it's not dealing with you, you're supposed to tell that brother, stop, stop, go apply Matthew 18 to them. Mm -hmm. Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me this? That's right. You understand? Because what? That's Christianity. You don't want it solved. And you showing hatred towards that friend because if you really loved him, you say, stop, don't do this. We would do this in the Christian church, but we not there no more. So we have to apply this. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, read it. This is Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You see that? The Lord said don't suffer sin upon him. Because what ends up happening with uh, uh, our people, a lot of times in Christianity, we use gossiping and backbiting and all these type of tail bear, all these type of things to bond. Sister Betty, you heard about sister such and such? I heard she got this man and she slept with the pastor, blah, blah, blah. And then you see the sister, shalom, sister. You understand? Or, or And I'm telling you, that spirit is among men too. Right. Brothers right. got to shake that spirit. Because if you don't shake that spirit, now you back in the world again, but you got fringes on. Right. Yeah, how you how you have a your relationship should be based off the scriptures, but your relationship is based off gossiping and murmuring and complaining about your brothers and sisters. Right, right. Your right. job is to correct them if you love them. Right. It don't make and, sense. Right. And, and it's it's a weird transition in a conversation where at one point you gossiping and backbiting about something, somebody, then you like Oh, yeah, sis, you know, or yeah, brother, this brother ain't right. He offended me, so on and so forth. This sister ain't right. She offended me. But meanwhile, you like, yeah, all praise to the most high. Sister, you ain't apply Matthew 18. 
yeah, so you gonna put some fringes on your clothes today? <laughs> like, you ain't apply Matthew 18. <laughs> you must apply the scripture. All right. And can I say something about that cap? And that's on point what what's coming out. And these are things that we gotta uh, reshape our mind from. That's what you repent from, and that's the um, the, the the patience and the, the experience you learning how to overcome yourself, the things that you battle, the things when it say I was shaped in iniquity, that's what you was shaped in on how you, that, that's how I come. Can I all manner of evil in our tongue in our mouth, and that's why you got to brighter that thing, and it's hard to do. That's why it talks about a ship is steered by will. You know, a horse is is the bridle's in his mouth to to guide it, and that same thing with your tongue. Your your, your tongue can be the whole um, perception of you that's negative because what come out your mouth. Read. This is Psalms fifty two and verse two. The tongue devises mischief, mm -hmm. like as like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You Damn. see, you see that. That's what the tongue can do. It can cut like a knife. You can break people down. You can destroy them, or you can use that tongue as as a a, a a a surgeon instrument to heal somebody. But we don't do that. We don't do that. But it's just showing you how sharp and dangerous your tongue can be if you don't control it. Go ahead. Verse three: Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteously. You see that. That's what that's why we find ourselves in these positions because we love evil. We love talking about people. We love backbiting. We love tail bearing because that's 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 the world that we come from. That's why you will find on these TV shows. That's what that's what promotes. Right. They promote that talking about each other. They put it on my people in a certain category to get them knowing they can't control their emotions. The, 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 the one, number one way to show that you can't control your emotions is through your mouth. Right. And the things that you say to people, because our people love evil more than good. Go ahead. Verse four: Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Right, because you love that. You have itching ears for that. You love that. What Captain's talking about? When somebody bring a Matthew 18 to you, you know the right thing to do. That's why I say up here, it say you rather it say you rather hear lying rather than speaking righteously. You know a person bringing a Matthew 18 to you is wrong, but guess what? You love lying and you love devouring words. long as they're not talking about you and they're talking about somebody else, it's all pleasant to your ears. Right. 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 Go ahead. No, I was just going to um, finish reading that last one. Yes, sir. Verse 5. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. You see that? That's why we got to get our mind right. He said for your tongues and your devouring words. Right. And that's you love evil more than good. You love hearing the foolishness. You got to be like Lot when he was in Solomon and Gomorrah. They filthy, he was vexed with their filthy conversations. That's all I have. Okay, I'll pray. Go ahead. You want to bring an example? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so you know, like James talked about that too in verse in chapter 3 about their tongue. It's like, you know, a little member, you know, that, that can't be changed. But we got to overcome that. And it all starts mentally. Right. I want to read this precept real quick. Sirach chapter 19, verse 5. Go ahead, somebody read it. I got it for you. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 5. Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, mm -hmm. but he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. You see that because he said that, uh, in James, he said that, like, bitter and sweet can't come out the same faucet. So you, 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 he's showing you you can't do that. You can't serve two masters like that, you know, with that tongue. Come on. Verse 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Without strife. Because why? Because you're keeping the commandments. You're applying everything. So you're going to live without strife. And that helps you to rule that small member. Come on. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Shall have less evil. They ain't gonna, all them unwanted trials, they be coming your way because you're in the midst of that babbling and that foolishness. Right, right, right. So, you know, like, look at the example of how Christ dealt with his disciples. 
He knew Judas Iscariot was the devil, and guess what he told him? He said it openly. But one of y'all gonna betray me. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Judas said, "Is it me, Lord?" <laughs> Thou says. <laughs> Christ ain't play with nobody. For some reason, we supposed to play with each other. No, show true love to your neighbor and don't suffer sin on them. That's so what's so heavy about that. So you're right? saying Judas' own tongue rebuked himself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 15. All right. Dealing with that same, um, can you correct your brother? Because remember this, there's bonds and friendships that we have, and we have to take advantage of that, meaning don't let that closeness be that relationship that you could be able to correct your brother don't, because it's always better when somebody that's close to you can really talk to you about the situation that they see on you. You understand? Because it's like, brother, I see this spirit. Sister, you know, I've been noticing this. You know what I mean? You ain't been coming to the Sabbath as much no more. Or, you know, you ain't been putting in your brick as much no more. So on and so forth. You understand? And it's always more pleasant when you're getting rebuked by somebody that's a familiar face to you. Right. All right? You speak to them often and, you know, you... You, like, for example, <laughs> it's funny because sometimes, you know, brothers will come amongst us and brothers have some food in their beard. And they right-hand man be right next to him, chopping it up, <laughs> laughing. I'm like, I walk up, I'm like, brother, you got some food in your beard. And they'll look dead at the brother who they close with and be like, brother, why you ain't been telling me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so many times. I'll be right he started thinking about all the people you done talk to. <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> I done talk to that person with the food. Yeah. That person. Brother, you got something in your nose. Do this. Do this. <laughs> he look at his best friend. How dare you? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And the Lord wants us to do that because he doesn't want any type of changing of minds dealing with you two. You two men or you two sisters dealing with a situation that's so simple to apply, all right? Because Matthew 18 ain't necessarily dealing with sin. It might be an art that might have been an offense that rubbed a brother or sister the wrong way, all right? And we got to always remember when we go into a Matthew 18 situation, it's not about thinking about the end result, getting somebody put out. It's the Matthew 18 is about... Being able to have the platform to speak about what's on your mind that's bothering you about a situation that happened, and and you go into that situation knowing that okay, I might not hear from this brother or sister. You're right, you're right. You you understand? The person might be like, well, you know, I this is the reason why I did this and did that. All right, well, no problem. At least y'all spoke about it. You understand? You, that that's where that forgiveness and charity and loving our neighbors thyself come in because you're not gonna let nothing bother you and start to bother and disturb your walk, but also too you are gonna put out on the table what you you know what been bothering you, but then at the same time you're not gonna let it get to the point where no you're not admitting that I was right, so I need my witnesses now. Then you see the brother's weak in his spirit or the sister's weak in her spirit. So then you want to further it past that because your end result is seeing them put out the body. Right, right. That's hatred. And, yeah. Total Very total true. annihilation. Right. And and it, it, it basically cap is between you two. You know what I'm saying? And it's nobody else. Really, the scripture is telling you you should be involved in it because if you just spoke your piece, you got it off your chest, that should be it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whether they say I apologize, whatever, whatever. Now the air is clear and your conscience should be clear. Now you can move on with life. Right. Sometimes our people don't want apology, bro. They want vengeance. Right, right, right. right. They want blood, bro. Right. And watch this. A lot of times, you know how we got to look at Matthew 18, that a uh, Matthew 18 is the first uh, 18 and 15 is the successful uh, art between a brother and a sister, um, you know, resolve. Uh, on down is just safeguards to try to keep the brotherhood in unity. Right. All right. So meaning, if, if a situation arose, then you know y'all spoke to each other. Hey, all praises. Y'all successfully did that thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's for. You know what I mean? Because scriptures say it's impossible that offenses will come. All right. So that's how we gotta look at Matthew 18 and 15. All right. So now l let's go to uh, John chapter 13 and verse 34. All right, John chapter 13, 34. 
because we're still dealing with uh, can you correct your brother? And it's important because um, in these last days, Christ had to tell us this because if not, you know, sh we wouldn't have no guideline on how to deal with people that we didn't know until we repented. Right. You know what I mean? Like we don't know what brothers likes and dislikes. All I know, you got fringes on and you love the feast days like me and you Hey, you know what I'm saying? You want to see your people put back on top again. You know what I mean? Those That's the common denominator. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, come on. It's the book of John, chapter 13 and verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you. It wasn't a new commandment, but the Lord said it was because we weren't applying it. Right. You understand? Right. <laughs> hey, why black people only work together good when they clocked in? And, and why Edomites know that? That's why they say, are you a good team player in the interview? Because they got other black people that they want you to work with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, like, they like, we can't have two or three black people that don't work well with each other. It's just going to be chaos. It's going to look like a Popeye's uh, 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 restaurant. <laughs> black people selling Popeye's chicken outside the back door. Employees. And <laughs> Stabbing each other, yeah. wrecking their cars, everything. Body slamming eat mice outside over a piece of chicken. That's fake chicken. <laughs> Fried chicken Popeye's food. chicken tastes the same. On, on, uh, in California, it's the same thing in New York. Right. It tastes the same. That's witchcraft. <laughs> That's another topic in itself. <laughs> Let me not get going on this Popeye's chicken. <laughs> hey, none of y'all watching the class better be in a drive through right now. <laughs> so anyways, read it again. <laughs> a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Come on. As, as I have loved you. Christ gave his life for the church. Christ cared for us. He built us up. He came on the earth and gave us a better understanding of the laws. All right? That's why he said, if you got hatred in your heart, you a murderer. Right. Because that's what's going to end up happening. He said, you look on a woman, you are an adulterer right. and lust after her. Because that's what's going to end up happening. Right. right, because what he's saying, if you look at your, if you hate your brother in your heart, you a murderer. Because if you had the opportunity to kill him, you would. Right. You just know the, the laws of the land give prevent you from doing that. Right. But if you have, if you can be justified and excused to to murder somebody, you would. Just the same way, if you look at that sister and and, and you commit adultery with her in your head, because if you had the opportunity to lay with her or she put herself in a position to to entice you, you would you would engage in it. Right. 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 If right. the opportunity presents itself. Right. 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 So let's deal with the uh, third sign. Uh, are you strong in the Lord? Have you learned working with each other? Have you learned working with each other? All right? Because, huh? Do you work well or whatever? Right, right, right. <laughs> are you a team player? Right, right, <laughs> right. Same thing. Right. <laughs> Am I eating my voice? Bob, are you a team player? <laughs> Guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. All right? You know, when we was over at camp, uh, in San Antonio, it was a brother uh, with um, I ain't gonna say the camp, um, but we have pe they don't they don't hate us, so they don't hate us like the other camps. <laughs> I say it like that. <laughs> but the point is, is like the brother had some um, shoestrings hanging from he had his fringes and he had the shoestrings. So right, right. But the brother was peaceable, you know what I'm saying? So the point is, is like, remember the scriptures say, can two walk together except they be agreed? Right. Like, and the brother wants to come to the school. We're like, sure, come to the school, brother, because the brother's young in the faith, all right? And he can, he's learning. Right. But when the scriptures say, can two walk together except they be agreed, don't come into our school pushing that doctrine, though. Right. You see what I'm saying? He's, he, was, uh, he was very, he said, well, you know, I thought I should wear it, but, you know, I, like a lot of my friends that I know wear it so you know I, I just wear it and I'm like okay but you know the scriptures say this you understand right. so he's like okay all right no problem I, I get that I get that so the brother wasn't bucking up so he could come to the school but the scriptures say can two walk together except they be agreed like for example when you look at the banner of IUIC IUIC the purple and gold represents royalty represents an organized nation but people that come through these doors should know we don't do multiple wives. That's not that's not for this time. You tripping. We don't cover our head. Christ said don't do that. Right. All right? The scriptures say that we must keep the high holy days and feast days. Those laws are still in effect. We must wear our fringes. 
because there's a doctrine going around now that you don't wear fringes now, all right? That the laws, that the sisters must take off the pants in the masculine spirit and humble themselves and wear God's attire that the Lord ordained for a woman to wear. So in this is one of, or oh, these are one of many other things that the Lord told us to do. But the point is, is um, the banner IUIC, that's what that represents, all right? It represents what we believe, all right? A brother, it, trust me, you'll never see nobody walk through these doors with a with a, uh, a a lily pad on their head and shoestrings on, <laughs> and they talking about, I've been watching IUIC, right. and I want to join. No, you ain't been watching us, because right. if you've been watching, you wouldn't have that on your head. Exactly. You understand? Exactly. So read what you got. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. You see that? The Bible says, gather together, O nation, not desire. That's that's so easy to read and roll off your lips, but then it's, it's hard to apply because Matthew 18 gets in the way, um, captivity gets in the way, all these different things and shortcomings, um, you know, our own personal, you know, I don't know if I get along with this person, gets in the way, so on and so forth. So, you know, excuses, right. So it's showing us that in these last days, gathering together is easy to come together and see each other and be in each other's presence but gathering together ain't talking about only just on the sabbath right. it's talking about can the men come together and accomplish something right. can we work together you know how many times we've been to places and uh like for example let's just say that after the sabbath all of the men we all went into walmart to go pick up something we walk in there in our in our attire just to go in there the whole world was stop in walmart i've seen it done before we just so happen right right we just so happen to have been passing through but the point is is everybody is astonished to see black men in order um not fighting amongst each other and killing one another and and not going against each other and actually accomplishing something a small glimpse is like when we go to the movies the all the attention that y'all draw just because it ain't that we just uh um exclude no one we just excited to be around each other we just love right. one another and that just radiate through the whole movie theater that's what happens right 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 right, right. hey Kevin, that's like the fun day in the park that we did you had people coming up trying to figure out what we were doing right involve themselves and stuff like that you know just trying to figure it out right 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 so um let's go to uh no finish that finish that read it again Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. So this is something hard that our people must accomplish. I ain't talking about just coming together on the Sabbath. I'm talking about gathering together outside of the Sabbath. Reaching out, knowing that the people that stay next to you in your area that believe the same thing you believe. All right? Because I don't know about you. I don't want to be around no brother that think you could uh, sleep with little girls. All right? I might castrate you. I don't want to be around people like that. I want to be around brothers and sisters that believe the same thing I believe, right. that see in these scriptures the same thing I see. All right? Hey, so, real yeah. quick precept on that there. Uh, because what y'all talking about with the friendship and how we're supposed to uh, gather together along with one another, real quick precept that, that uh, it also goes into the way that um, we show respect and we gather in order with one another. It also goes and ties into how we feel the Lord. Real quick, Sirach, not Sirach, yeah, Sirach, uh, six and seventeen. Sirach six and seventeen. Because when you're talking about friendships and gathering together and being like-minded, um, these are all th these are all the basic principles as far as us being being a nation, right. being that nation. Go ahead and bring that out for me, please. Sirach chapter six and verse seventeen. Mm-hmm. Whoso feared the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So like the scriptures that you've been bringing out on Matthew's 8, how to apply Matthew's 18, how to gather together, how to how to not have hatred for your brother and sister. OK, it says if you fear the Lord, you're going to you're going to do what the scriptures are telling you to do. You're going to seek that guideline. You're going to try to give some mercy and some grace toward your brothers. You're going to correct them when you see them in the midst of sin. Read. 
says for as he is, just like you say, you, you don't want nobody that's that's not on the same wavelength as you are as far as like like you say, being a pedophile sleeping with you. You don't want that around you. You want like minded people around you. That the same way you would correct them, they will turn around and do the same professional re correct you when you're in the midst of sin. Okay, so read that for as he is. For as he is mm -hmm. So shall his neighbor be also. That's like-mindedness. That's gathering together with like Zephaniah 2 and 1. We all own the same wavelength. We all have the same understanding. We all know what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And we will all correct one another in the time. Right. Let's go back to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Come on. So we don't know when Christ coming. So we got to accomplish this before Christ come. All right? And and let, let's just say Christ said, hey, y'all got to accomplish a, a team effort project and do it in perfect unison before December 30 or it ain't no December 30, bro. Before just some date, pre predetermined date. Oh, we be working hard. We get that thing accomplished because we want to see the kingdom. But the Lord ain't going to show you when he coming because he want to see your faith. You understand? Come on. Come on. You see that? Before the fierce anger of the Lord come up upon you. Why would the fierce anger, anger of the Lord come upon you? Because you don't want to gather. You don't want to work together. You understand? It's so easy to, well, that's not my idea, so I don't want to do it. Well, hold on now. Are you working together? Oh, this this brother did better than me, so I'm angry at him. This sister did better than me, so I'm mad now. Is that gathering together? So you're saying no. it's a bunch of murderers. Right. But that's just murderers. A spirit. bunch of church folk. Yeah. We don't want to be those people. But they ain't not getting the kingdom because they are murderers in the spirit. That's why we got to work on that. That's, a, that's exactly why we brought that scripture out. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. All right? So now, let's go to uh, Revelation 18 and 4. It's saying the same thing, but, and it's, it's really showing, it's showing the, um, the, uh, the end game on this. Let's read it real quick. The book of Revelations, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Because her plagues are destruction, nuclear fire. Come on. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven. You see that? Her sins have reached to heaven. Come on. And God had remembered her iniquities. You see that? So this place, all the evil that has done, the Lord keeps it in remembrance. So that's why even the more reason we have to separate ourselves. Because remember... Babylon the Great is a nation, a, a great mixing pot, all right? What it say? Part iron, part clay? Mm -hmm. So it's showing you that America, Babylon the Great, is separated, all right? It's a separated nation, but it's united under a front of United States. And so it gives the illusion of being united, but it's separate, all right? All right. Like the, the Moabites go to their Moabite church. The Edomite, you black, you black men that's in you Christian churches, go to a white neighborhood and try to go into their church and watch what happens. You will not enter into that church. That happened to me and my brother one time. We went to, uh, we moved to this new neighborhood, and it was a, we went to the nearest church. We went in there, the the drums, the music stopped, the <laughs> pastor stopped. It was just like, er, like. Can I help you, sir? Right. Uh, right. You, are, are you in the right location? <laughs> are, are you here to clean? Are you lost? Right, now? right. <laughs> because and it's showing you that when the scriptures say her sins have reached the heaven, that it's a spirit of separation here. So if you have not learned to gather together, you have not learned to learn to repent. Right. All right. So so uh, let's go to um uh, Nehemiah four and seventeen. All right, Nehemiah four and seventeen. Because as we gather together. Remember, we gathering together under the commandments of God. So when you look at Revelation 12 and 17, it says that the the dragon was wroth with the woman and right. went to make war with, this, with her remnant that keep the commandments. So I'm paraphrasing. But the point is, 
is showing we gathering together in righteousness, not wickedness. Right. So when we gather together, the automatic um, reaction to us gathering together, you might as well say black plus or southern kingdom plus northern kingdom equals dragon wrath. Right. All right? <laughs> to, for simple math, you know what I'm saying? Right. Come on. It's the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, that laid it, even one with one of his hands wrought in the work, mm -hmm. and with the other hand held a weapon. You see that? Come on. For the builders. So the, for the who? For the builders. For the men of the Most High God, the men that are strong in the Lord. Come on. Everyone had his sword girded by his side. So his sword in this on this side is your Bible being studied, girded up to apply and uh, wake up your people with. All right. Come on. And so build. And he that sound the trumpet was by me. You see that? So it's showing you they was building and they had their sword in their hand. They was building and they had their sword in their hand, showing that we constantly building up the nation of Israel, right. but we being mindful, all right? Because, hey, the weapons of our warfare are not uh, carnal. So on this side, we keep it, we staying vigilant because right. we know we at war, all right? We had a war for the battles, the battle of our people's minds, all right? Because if you win the people's mind, you win the people, all right? right, right. And these people, the 12 tribes of Israel, belong to the Lord. Right. So it's our job to bring our people back to the Heavenly Father. Right. All right. So let's deal with uh, five. Yeah, go ahead. Jump to verse Jump to verse uh, 16. To even accomplish all this, you, your mind has to be ready. Right. Book of it, go ahead. Sorry. Book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 16. And it came to pass from that time forth. That 4 and 6. Oh, you said 4 and 6? Yes, sir. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. So built we the wall. That's the mission. And all the walls were joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. That's the mindset you got to come in here. Not to come here to for everybody to, to, to please some dr different tribulation that occur that to deviate you from the mission. Be ready to say, you know what, if the most if we are special people to the most high, it ain't nothing that we can't get done because the most high would have he would have put that on us. He would have uh, um, had us depend on things when he took us out of Egypt and took us into the wilderness. No, he said, I take you out of Egypt. Y'all all y'all need. Right. We here. We, we be thinking ourselves we all we need. We just got to have that mindset to work together and not be distracted. Right, 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 right. So now let's go to uh, the fourth one is um, in uh, being strong in the Lord. Are you are you always or easily offended? Uh, all right. Are you always or easily offended? Meaning, um, you know, we can't be emotional in these last days. All right. right? Like, for example, when we get to the wilderness, Christ going to speak to us face to face. and He's going to say, look, these scriptures say this. This is what the understanding is, so on. So when Christ said it, you can't be like, oh, my God, well, again? No, this script, he going to cut your head off. You got to walk around Jordan <laughs> again? Right, 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 right. <laughs> Did we just right. walk around Jordan twice already? <laughs> right, 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 right. So um, so um, let's go to um, Psalms 119 and 165, all right? Right, right, Jericho. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. 119 and 165. This is Psalms 119 and 165. Great peace have they which love the law. Uh-huh. <laughs> and nothing shall offend them. Ooh, read that slow. <laughs> read that slow, brother. Great peace. Great what? Great peace. Do you know what it means for your mind to be at peace? I don't know about you, but that's why I come together with my brothers right. and my sisters. J Jake don't understand. I don't get, that I, to be peace. Right, 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 right. <laughs> when I was, right, 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 right. <laughs> when when I was unrepented, I hated confrontation. But y'all know how it is. We had to deal with it. Right. But the point is, we ain't none of us come. My like for example, my brother that's in the world, he hates the he he hates an argument. <laughs> he will not deal with. It. He'd be like. If he's wrong, he'd be like, 
I can't talk about it. It's just walk off. I'm like, <laughs> right. All right, it is what it is. But the point is, we have to be able to, like, uh, like they say, be it like a duck, uh, like water up, off a duck's duck back. back. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's why the scripture said great peace. Great peace. You understand? Because if you look at anything, you'll find something wrong with it right. if you're looking for it. Right. You know what they say, a, a pessimist. Is that what they call them type of people? A pessimist. Right, right. They, they the, the the cup half empty, brother. That's you know what I'm saying? You straining your eye <laughs> at a net. He can't right, see right, it right. half full. Right, 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 right. <laughs> He get his unleavened bread. He like, oh, my God, it's not enough wine in there. <laughs> Brother, you just need to drink a little bit. <laughs> we had to ration it out to everybody. Yeah, a little bit <laughs> All right. One thing about peace, it don't come easy. Right. You got to fight for that. Right, 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 right. You know, it's a mindset. And you can't you can't want peace when you're looking for confusion. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Let me find something wrong today. <laughs> oh my God. You never did that when you was at work. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Working for the man. All right. Come on, read. Great peace have they which love thy law. You see that? Great peace have they that love thy law. Because you know that it's a scripture to apply dealing with anything that you battling. Right. And I got I I got I I just got to drop it on y'all Israel. A lot of times Israel don't realize when you not in peace. Read that top part again. Great peace. When you not in great peace, have they Well, no 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 no. When you not in great peace, it's written all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, you ain't got to say a word. That, is that how the song goes? <laughs> <laughs> don't have to say a word. <laughs> it's written all over your face that you <laughs> grieve. Shalom, brother Grinch. I mean, sister, uh, I mean, uh, uh, shalom, brother. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, yeah. It's written all over you your face. You all right, brother? <laughs> yeah. That's it. Everything what happened standing? now, brother? <laughs> your countenance say otherwise, brother. Right, right, right. right. Sabbath. Yeah, be happy, brother. <laughs> With your joy. I got something in my eye. I just got something in my eye. Right, 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 right. <laughs> the scriptures say, because our service not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Glad. So when hard. you walk in here, you serving the Lord. So Because you don't do it with joyfulness, the Lord said, you don't need to serve my rest. Right. You understand? Because you always mad. You understand? Everybody is a... Uh, 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 under construction. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Work, Work in progress. progress. Yep. Come on, read it again. Great peace have they which love thy law. See that? Say, great peace have they that love thy law because you're going to apply the law, right. statutes, and commandments to one another. And you're not going to be afraid to apply, apply it. Right. And then now let's look at the latter end of that. Let's go to um John 11 and 6. Because you got to look at on the, um, on the, um, on the one end that's given out the that has the peace and you dealing with a situation where okay look it's a situation with me and a brother or me and a sister or whatever the case and you're gonna apply the law with them guess what that person on the other end let's see what the bible say come on it's the book of john chapter 11 and verse 6 when he had heard therefore no, uh, matthew no sorry it's the book of matthew Chapter eleven and verse six. And and blessed is he. Who? And blessed is he. And guess what that guess another attribute of that person that's blessed? Soldier Silas. Guess what's another attribute of that person that's blessed? <laughs> Stand up, ready. brother. What's another attribute of that person that's blessed? No, based upon Psalms nineteen and one sixty five. There you go. Right. So you're going to be a blessed. Thank you. Thank you, soldier. You're going to be blessed and at peace. Right. I don't know about you, but I like that combination. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm blessed and at peace. <laughs> All praises. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So come on. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So the Bible says blessed is he that's not offended in me. Because Christ is the word made manifest. So when these words are writ read to you on something that you might have fell short on, then guess what? You're going to feel blessed because you're not offended. Right. You're going to be like, oh, praises. I appreciate that. Man, that, that yoke was on me. You right. know what I'm saying? You just, you know, I, I didn't see that. But now, you know, I'm, I'm like that little child being reborn. Right. I see that because the Bible says that just like it said that I'm an Israelite. So just like I applied standing up with my chin up 
saying I'm a holy people, I'm going to apply this correction right, right here because right. the Lord gave it to me. It's not the messenger. Is is the Lord gave it to me because it's written right here in black and white. It's in right. my Bible too. <laughs> All right, you. I was reading along. I highlighted it when he cut me with it. Right. So it's not for. It's 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 not that you understand. Right. It's not. It's nothing personal. Right. It wasn't written right before you walked in. <laughs> it, to, to, it's gonna be to for him. For you. Him only. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You a special people and all, but come on. You know what I'm saying? It's written by our learning, so right, learn right, right. from it. And, and, and the side note, it got the brother name. <laughs> <laughs> no, brother. It's for you to apply. It's for the children of Israel to apply. Right. All right? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, when, when you read this script, when you read this Bible, it talks about seeking the peace a lot as one of the qualities of a leader. And what I've learned over time is there's a transference of energy, negative energy and positive energy when you're dealing with certain people. And then when you desire to keep the peace, it's like you won't allow negative energy to jump on you. Like right, we talk, we right. call it spirits in the Bible. Right. But, you know, I'm trying to use it plain as possible for the people out there. But right. Like even when you're having issues in the world, there'll be people that have attitudes or upset and things like that. And if you... If you um, engage in that, that spirit jump off on you, and right. you walk around with that spirit on you. Right. Right. Now, when you're trying to keep the peace, it actually is something that keeps negativity away from you. Right. And it helps you uh, with your day to day life. That's why coming to this, to the Sabbath and dealing with the people that keep the commandments is so important to you because we don't have drama amongst right. us. Right. So right. So it's right, a right. place for peace. Right. I know right, when right. I'm going through a lot of stuff and having a rough week and things are going bad. Amari can tell you, I'll be mad, and then as soon as I get to the Sabbath, I slowly start feeling better the more I start interacting with the brothers right. that I know. Right, By right, the right, end right. of the Sabbath, I'm happy. Yep. Right, right, but I right, may right. have had a mad, a terrible week and be angry, but slowly that peace starts seeping in when I'm amongst my right. people. I'll pray. If you ain't got that, when you come to the Sabbath, you got to pray to the Lord that he put that spirit on you right, to love right. to be around your people that keep right. the commandments. Right. You know what's so heavy about the, the Most High? Uh, when you look up, the the benefits of frankincense and myrrh, it deals with um, relaxing, right. uh, uh, clearing your mind, relief, Peace. stress, all these type of things. And do you know that's the Lord's favorite smell? That's what the priest burned in the temple. Right. What do you think? He tell them to burn sage in the temple? He said burn frankincense and myrrh. Right, exactly. So, so the Lord's letting you know that what? These things bring peace in your life. Right. Some 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 brothers and sisters need a frankincense and myrrh kit being burned in their house. <laughs> right. You understand? You got a bad spirit. You angry. You got spirits on you. As soon as you walk in, you want to lash out on your wife or your husband. Don't say nothing to nobody. Go in and go light the frankincense and myrrh right. and let it burn and relax yourself and then start interacting and speaking to people. Right. All right? Why do you think we burn so much frankincense and myrrh in here? <laughs> so so let's go on to the uh the fifth one all right and that's um how uh have to learn or have you learned to forgive right ha have you learned to forgive yeah no it's easy if you learn to apply forgive. All of it. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you so, looking for yeah. peace <laughs> yeah. go ahead, go ahead. And, and all these all these seven that we're going over israel they all coincide and, and mesh together they all work hand in hand, one right. to right. another. Hand and foot, right, right. So now, uh, read that real quick. Well, uh, we had kept. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Sirach 28 and 7, I'm sorry. The book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Uh-oh, you see that? So why did it say remember the commandments? Because the commandments teach you to forgive. Mm-hmm. The forgive the for to the command. I got slipped up. I might be having a stroke right now. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> no, the commandments tell you to forgive your neighbor. Right. The for the commandments tell you to not let malice resonate in your spirit. Right. Because when you look at the fruits of the spirit, it doesn't say anything about grudges, holding grudges. Right. When you look at the fruits of the spirit, it doesn't say anything about. Uh, having your nose tooted up in evil. Right. You understand? It don't say nothing like that. It tells you to be humble. The fruits of the spirit, joy, peace. Right. You understand? Long-suffering, patience. You Temperance. understand? 
temperance. Mm-hmm. It's telling you all of these things because what? You're not supposed to be easily provoked. Right. You understand? Then when a Matthew 18 situation passed, guess what? Sometimes you got go home and you recant the Matthew 18 situation and you want justice. But guess what? That's where the battle within comes in. Right. We say, you know what? I'm just going to relax. You know what? This, you know. We all coming. We all got spirits on us sometimes. We right, all battling. Right. That's why we in here. We got fringes on. We trying to do better. Right. You understand? So th- just like you forgive, you, just like you working on forgiving somebody, you have to learn work on forgiving yourself right. if you fall short. You understand? Because if you forgive yourself and move on, you're going to do better, and you're going to make sure that when a situation happens with you and another brother or sister, mm-hmm. you're going to forgive them. Right. That's when it goes back to, like, the strips you open up with, examining yourself. Right, 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 right. Read it one more time for me. This is Sirach 28 and 7. Remember the commandments. You see that? Remember the commandments and do what? And bear no malice to thy neighbor. You see that? And bear no malice to thy neighbor. Go ahead. Remember the covenant of the highest. You see that? Remember the covenant of the highest. Because if if the Lord ain't forgive us, will we be here? Hell no. No. (laughs) The the scriptures say only the Lord's mercies we Mm -hmm. not consume. These other nations hate us. I'm going to tell you straight. Right. Now you got fringes on, gathering together, hmm. accomplishing things. Right. Oh, my God. They hate you now. They really hate you. It's Edomites that lose sleep thinking about how organized and will y'all work together. I'm telling you straight. They scared as hell. Come on. And wink at ignorance. You know what it means to wink at ignorance? Don't always let things bother you. Right. All right. That don't mean that if it bothers you so much, you need to apply Matthew 18. All right, cool, apply it. But remember, behind that Matthew 18, no matter what happens before you go into there, you gonna you know you're gonna forgive that brother right. or that sister. You know what? I don't I don't know if I'm gonna get my point across. Or you walk away. I didn't get my point across. But you know what? It's all good. I'm okay. Right. I'm okay. I said my piece. All right. That's why when you put something on the table dealing with a situation, say your piece and anything you left out. You should have said, you should have spoke up. Right. Shame on you. Right. Shush, shuffle. up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You better put it on yeah. the table. I'm just saying. But that don't, right, but that don't mean you're going to just spew out your emotions and offend more in a Matthew 18 situation. You're going to stick with the facts or what you saw or what you perceived, right. but not no assuming what's going on in their mind. You understand? Yeah. That's where that forgiveness comes in. Ah. Uh, I don't know if he fully understood my point, but you know what? I forgive the brother. And I'm going to make it my point to make sure that I salute that brother. Right. I'm making my point that I don't ignore that brother or sister. I'm going to make it my point to show them that I love them. Right. You see what I'm saying? Hey, Cap. And, oh, oh. and, and the, the other side of that is like it's now time for that brother or sister to go back and reflect on what came out. Right. Let them meditate on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. And then it's all about when – the, the um, counting the costs and when the matter. You know, right. a lot of times when it comes to negative and somebody bring your name up, we automatically mag- magnify it. Some things is not that serious. It's not that deep. You know what I'm saying? When you really put it in when in the matter, if I bring this out, would this bring this man, would this bring this brother or this sister and I closer? Right. Or, or would it put a, 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 contention be- a, a, a contention between us? Right, 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 right. And I just, matter of fact, that's when you wink at it. Winking at a matter, not necessarily saying that you was right. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a person could wrong you. The person could have been 100% wrong, and you wink at it, and you just let it go. So these are things you got to be mindful of. Way to, way to uh, count the cost when you're going into something, dealing with your brother. Is it going to be a stumbling block to the mission? Right, 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 right. right. So then now let's go to Matthew six and fourteen. All um, right. can can we can we please read down to verse nine? Yeah, okay, that's it's right on the subject we okay, on. Okay, come on, that's verse great. eight. Abstain from strife, and thou shalt diminish thy sins. You know what another word for abstain from strife is? Seek the peace. Right, right, right. exactly. I'm glad you brought that out because that's what we got to do. We got to right. seek the peace with one another. And the scriptures say it's something that stir up strife. Right, I right. I mean they want to. Keep this thing going. Right. It's about resolve. Right. 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 That's just what the captain was talking about. Knowing when certain things you just got to wink at. Because right. sometimes you could abstain from things because you can't blow it out of proportion if you bring it out. And it might be something that ain't even that important. 
let me just relax on it and let me and the Lord deal with it. <laughs> and I'm going to forgive this brother from afar, forgive this sister from afar, and work on this myself. Because sometimes it's in you. Right, right, right. That's right. why I say abstain from strikes because it's, you have the power to stop this stuff. Right. right. You, know, you know what's so heavy? You know how many times, it's been almost 13 years I've been keeping these commands. You know how many times I've been offended? Oh, my God. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times I've been offended by people with fringes on? But guess what? I'm finna the Lord's will. That ain't going to be my That ain't gonna be my cross. I've been forgave. I forgive, forgive, forgive. Think about it. Judas Iscariot betrayed Christ. And you best believe Christ forgave him because he wouldn't have been a perfect sacrifice. Right. So like, like, likewise us, we can't let, let nothing get in the way of us getting the kingdom. Right. Nothing. The like uh, I, I mentioned this example before. Like for example, all of a sudden, uh, let's just say Catherine Rama, I use you for example. Uh, uh, let's just say they bring uh, is how many of us are up here? Uh, six of us up mm-hmm. here, and they bring five uh, un- bread and wines. <laughs> and then I turn my back for a minute. He grabbed my bread and wine. I'm like, hey, hey, that was, and he ate it already. I ain't get to break bread. I'm like, nah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, that was my bread. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is good. <laughs> <laughs> it was luscious. Like, ah. Oh! <laughs> but guess what? At the end of the day, you telling me I'm gonna lose the kingdom over a piece of bread and wine? Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> you understand? Know because that can create a root of bitterness. Right. Now, everything I do, he gonna he probably can feel like that I'm doing it intentionally now. Right, 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 right. 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 Evil eye. Right, right, right. Evil right, 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 right. eye, and now you got a grudge towards a brother you... or sister, and that just inflames, and now right. you ain't getting the kingdom. Right, right, right. Over it, something it, so minor and minuscule. Right. right. You stand before the judge, the Lord, and he say, you not getting the kingdom. Because of that bread and wine situation <laughs> that happened, <laughs> you like out there. He make like, the bread and wine and give right. it to you and be like, "This is your reward." <laughs> now, you, now you ain't gonna get the key. Depart from me. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so um, for a furious man will kindle strife. Yeah, right. A furious man shall kindle sp- strife. Now let's go to Matthew six. It's the book of Matthew, chapter six. What verse, Cap? Fourteen. And verse fourteen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You see that? That's why it's important. If you forgive men your trespasses, the heavenly Father will also forgive you. All right? Exactly. So let's jump back. Let's jump down to uh, number six. Do you have a counselor, not a friend to vent? All right? Do you have a counselor and not a friend to vent? Let's go to... um, um, uh, Sirach six and six. All right, we need counselors. All right, that's uh, uh y- brothers and sisters got to ask yourself: Do you have a person, uh, a person that's close to you, that's a leader that's been through trials that can deal with you according to what you need to hear, not what you want to hear? Right. All right. right. Like Be- like uh, was it Jeroboam or Rehoboam? Right, 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 he's right, like right. Rebel. Young men, Rebel. Rebel. Yeah, right, his right. Familiars, his, his, his peers. Right, right, right. right. Can't do that. He like, what should I do, bro? Right. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> All right, and then that's another sign that you um that you're rejecting your counsel or your counselors when you seek to counsel from multiple people. Right, you could be going through a situation and you go to this person. And they tell you something, and you don't like that. So then you go to this person. Right. Then you go because really you want to hear what you want to hear to apply. Why you ask for counsel then? Right. Right. You just wasted everybody's breath. Right. Hey, so hey, Cap, you know what's heavy about that? Uh, when you say that, it's it's you've already made up in your mind, like you're saying, what you're going to do. You just want to have someone give you the validation or the excuse. So that right. if there's any repercussions on it, you can go back and point the finger. Right, right. That's what that's for. Right. right. So come on, read that. This is Sirach chapter 6 and verse 6. Be in peace with many. Me- meaning what? Be friendship with many. Come on. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. So that's showing you two things. A successful man or woman in this truth, Israelite man or woman in this truth, has a good counselor that's going to tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. And one person, that same person, that they could divulge secrets to. Right. Meaning, you can have the devil on you and be like, "Look, I might be wrong, but this and this and this and this and this." And the counselor here, and he like, "Bro, you got the devil on you." Right. 
go burn some frankincense and myrrh. Here go the prescription. <laughs> <laughs> go burn some frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> go take a cold yourself. shower. <laughs> and we're going to look for you a wife, brother. Shalom. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the point is, your counselor going to give you the right counsel. He's not right. going to sit there and be like, lean on some friendship because... He's still learning how to be a real counselor. He want to tell you the right thing, right. but he wants your friendship more. All right? We got to stray from that. Right. Let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. We're going to speed things up a little and, bit. And also, too, and when on that counselor, it ain't when they tell you got the devil on you, they ain't necessarily saying you evil. You just out of the spirit right now. You're not thinking clearly right, right. now. Right, right, and, right It ain't right. no different when um, Christ told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. Right, 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 right. You know, and then he turned around and told him, I'm going to build a church on you. <laughs> you go build a rock. <laughs> right, 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 right. Come on. <laughs> Proverbs 11 and 14, where no counsel is, the people fall. You see that? So, so you got to imagine something. Where the counsel, where there knows counsel is, the people fall. So I don't know about you, but why go through unneeded trials or time wasted in this truth right. when you could be able to go through something and learn? All right. Listen to the council, even though it's hard. You just right. listen to the council and make sure that you are successful. Right. All right. They like so you say, all medicine don't taste. Good. Right. So at least if your council gave you bad counsel, you can say you was wrong. You <laughs> gave me bad counsel. <laughs> right. This is all your fault. <laughs> but you're still my counselor, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So um, let's go to Proverbs 15, 22. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Finish. Yes, sir. Well, no counsel is the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. You see that? In the multitude of counselors. So that's showing you that it ain't talking about a multitude of people counseling you. It's talking about uh, uh, a dealing with a, this specific situation is dealing with a body or a congregation going in a direction and the leaders deciding the right. direction. All the right. Counselors. Right. So um, let's go to uh, uh, Proverbs fifteen twenty two. It's a book Still of Proverbs. Dealing with counsel. Chapter fifteen and verse twenty two. Without counsel, uh, propose uh, purposes are are disappointed. You see that meaning what? Without like, let's just say you got a business venture, and then let's just say a brother deals with finance, and you need some financial advice dealing with a business venture then you want to go to that person that deals with finance and take the counsel they give you. Right. Not because they the expert. But then you don't take the counsel. You want to go around and learn. And you want to reinvent the wheel. You're going to fall on your head. Right. All right. The Lord don't want us to do that. All right. So then uh, let's jump down to seven. Um, do you know what you battle with or your, thr or your thorn? All right. So let's go to Second uh, Corinthians 12 and 7. Do you know what you battle with or your thorn? Meaning, know ye not yourself, right. that she be reprobate. Know ye not yourself? You don't know what you battle with? Well, I ain't in your mind. Right. The Lord going to come in your mind on that day of judgment and judge you on what you didn't deal with. Right. Everybody know what they battle with, and if you don't know, go home and examine yourself. All right? And, I ain't, and for the men, I ain't talking about lust. All y'all battle with lust. We talking about we talking about actual things that you battle with right. that is that can hinder you from getting the kingdom. We right. you got to deal with lust too. All right, you've been told about what you battle with in the world. Right, either that's what got you in fights. That's what your mama kept whooping your behind for. <laughs> you know what you battle with. Right, you got a mouth you can't shut up. You you like to antagonize things. You like to egg on things. Provoke. You like to fight. What yeah, provoke. That's the word I'm looking for. Provoke certain situations. You can't walk away. You got an anger problem. These things is what's hindering you. Uh, right, Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Come on. At least I should be exalted above measure. You see that Paul said, at least I be exalted above measure. Come on. Through the abundance of the revelations. Uh-huh. Because he had a, not, a lot of knowledge. Come on. That was given unto me, a thorn in the flesh. You see that? So he said, a thorn in the flesh was given unto me. You know what that's showing you? Paul knew what he battled with. Paul knew what he battled with. All right? That's, that's what that's showing you. Come on. A measure of Satan to buffer me. You see that? A measure of Satan to buffer me. Keep me humble. All right? Come on. Lest I should be exalted above measure. You see that? Lest I should be exalted above, above measure. Go ahead. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. You see that? So meaning, when you know what you battle with, you apply the precepts that deal with that, and the Lord said, when you apply those precepts, 
and fight, then that grace is sufficient, yeah. all right? Because think about it. To know what you battle with, if you don't know what you battle with, you lost already. Right. That's like having blindfolds on going into a boxing <laughs> match. You're going to lose. Right. You're going to walk up, walk out hickeyed up by sin, and you're going to lose. <laughs> That's why we have to know what we battle with. Right. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. All right. So we've been going over a lot of precepts, dealing with our people, dealing with sin, dealing with what? Being able to obtain the kingdom. Because if we ain't, we ain't, we ain't working on these things, how are we going to obtain the kingdom? All right. Go ahead. Read that. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, no, I shall. 31. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing. Which I have in Christ our Lord, Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. You see that? He said, I die daily. What does that mean? That he put away that old man. That old man is dealing with sin. All right? That old man is dealing with your thoughts that you battle with. Right. All right? That old man is dealing with the shortcomings that we're going to have. And we're going to have till Christ comes. But the point is, is for you to deal with it. Right. All right? Right, every day he's doing a self-examination. Right. Am I getting better with this cross? Am I getting better with the things that I battle? Because that's the key thing where you see your progression if you're growing. You know what I'm saying? Like the seven uh, things we're going over. If you're growing in the Lord, by if these things are being uh, handled and executed every day. Right. You know, like Paul just said, I die daily. Right, right, right. right. So, th so uh, basically, that's the... That's the class. All praise to the Most High. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the class. Um, basically, we just want Israel to reflect on that. Real quick, um, you want to pan it around to show the beautiful decorating that the sisters did, and the, um, and uh, you know we got some mighty men of the Most High. Hey, hey, we just finished thirty-one days of camp that's out here right. in Houston. Right. Uh, the brothers got a video that's about to drop. Right. Hey, hey, y'all, brother, for yourself. <laughs> hey, all praise of the Most High. Hey, hey, all praise of the Most High. We, we ain't just blowing smoke up people behind. We got some diligent brothers out in Houston. Yeah, all yeah. right, we got some right. diligent brothers. Brothers working hard because we want to get out of here. That's right. And these sisters right. are uh, appreciating the brothers for all the hard work that they put in, and that's why they here. They put together. They had a bunch of great ideas. They worked together right. to get it done. These sisters got the school looking beautiful. You want to show a little bit what they what they had going on, brother? Huh? huh? Okay, okay. No, they don't want to move the camera. All right, no problem. Okay, okay. All right, they did a live. All right, cool, cool. So all praise to the Most High. Uh, definitely, we appreciate the things that the sisters did. Uh, all the sisters came together. They they got their camouflage on today. You know, what I'm saying they when brothers came in the door, they was cheering the brothers yeah. on, thanking the Most High for them. So, you know, the brothers walked in cheesing. They was like, all praises. <laughs> Man, when we got our sisters with us, we can't lose. That's right. 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 That's right. We got our right. sisters in the Lord. Who can come against us? That's right, 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 right. 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 <laughs> hey, hey, can we get a sister round of applause for this beautiful <laughs> decoration? Right. Well, praise to the most high. They we got, appreciate y'all. Yeah, seven in the morning. Right. Seven, seven been, in the morning. They could have been, they could've been doing, doing anything today, but yeah. they chose to, you know what I'm saying, make sure that the men was appreciated. And we appreciate y'all for doing that. You know what I'm saying? All praises. So so now we want y'all to take stock of what you battle with. Take stock of this class. Give yourself an honest, uh, objective reflection on examining yourself. All right, right. Right. So with that, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the, the power, power is might. Is what? Is might. Is what? Is might. Is what? Is might. Is what? Is might. So all praise in the Most High. So 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 I'm going off of what these brothers was what these brothers was chanting. I guess everybody's strong in the Lord. <laughs> All praises. Nobody got nothing to work on. Okay. All praises. Nah. <laughs> so all praises. Uh, Cap, you want to close it out? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so Israel, remember to uh, rate, like, our, and comment on our videos on all our social medias, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, so on and so forth. Remember to go to uh, the podcast as well and rate and like and comment on that as well. Remember uh, to support the Booster Club. Um, all the your, your arms and, and funds go to help uh, the leadership, like they just came back from Sierra Leone, complete these missions on what? Waking up the one-third of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. Um, as well as go to Original Royalty and purchase, buy, and support 
uh, everything we sell on there, all right, because that goes back to help the body as well as brothers and sisters may be in need, so on and so forth, all right? So uh, all praise to the Most High. Pray y'all got something from the class. Uh, we say shalom, Most High Christ bless y'all. Shalom, shalom, shalom Most High, most high Christ bless. bless. Christ bless. We are guides, we are kings, we march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs, stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah Kings demanding change Cause we believe we can